So I am an urban planner by training, and I spend a lot of time thinking about the built environment and the world around me, the urban spaces, the urban spaces, and the rural spaces, and how where we live impacts our quality of life and our psychology, how it's different when we travel and we live up, let's say, in New York City, or if you're like, you know, somewhere surrounded by nature. And so I'm preparing for today. That's part of what I was thinking about. What is the future of Sonoma County in terms of our cities and how we live? And what will that mean for our quality of life and keep forward? So getting ready for today, I started by doing research. <laughs> I have a strong research background. And I went and spoke to some experts. These are some images from elementary school students when asked what they think of people to them. And clearly, they're really looking forward to having and maybe it's just because, like you, or definitely me, sometimes you get stuck in traffic, and it would be really nice to fly above all of that. <laughs> Next, I go to some of my favorite inspiration, which is the media, which is always full of creative visions for what the future could hold. You might recognize these two images from Back to the Future and from Blade Runner. And I have to say that I'm very much hoping that my future will include a hoverboard because it always looks like a lot of fun. But all joking aside, there are certain things we certainly know about the future, and we will have to ask these questions in terms of how we're going to live, how we're going to get around. And I work for an organization called Green Bell Alliance, that does environmental advocacy work. And we work throughout the Nine County Bay Area. And one thing we know through our research is that. Today, there are 7 million people in the Bay Area, and we anticipate that by 2035, that number will grow to 9 million. In Sonoma County, based on research that's been done by the Sonoma County Economic Board, we know that between 2000 and 2010, the population grew by 5%, and that between today and 2030, we anticipate the population growing by 35%. Now, I'm not here to advocate that growth is good or inherently bad, but I do see it as an opportunity for us to be thoughtful and to think about how we grow and where we want to grow. And I have an opinion, I have a point of view, I definitely believe that there's a benefit to growing and putting our resources in terms of the built environment, where there's existing infrastructure, where there are existing jobs, and other types of resources. So change is not something new. Um, many of us who have been in Sonoma County or in the Bay Area for any amount of time knows that change is constantly happening. And here's an image of Petaluma and how it's changed over the last decade or so. And then here's another image, sorry, I'm just jumping around, of downtown San Francisco. You might recognize this image as the ferry building. It's a really popular tourist destination. They have a great farmer's market. And in the 80s, how many of you were here at that time, you may remember that a freeway actually went through that community. And in 1989, there was an earthquake, a created earthquake, and the freeway was damaged. And the bureaucracies that were involved at the time actually fully intended to rebuild the freeway. Now, Art Agnos, who was the mayor in San Francisco, had a vision for something different, for a different potential reality. And he worked with several engaged residents to put in place this pedestrian plaza that's there now. And it's really beautiful. And it's right on the bay. And uh, I asked you, between these two different scenarios, where would you rather hang out? I know I would rather be with the trees and the people. It looks a little bit more inviting. Um, all of that. So then, why do I bring up these different examples? Well, I have a few different points. First, that change is possible. You know, you see big steel buildings, they seem like they've always been there or they're hard to move, you know. But the built environment is actually something that we can be deliberate about and that can change over time. Um, the second point is that there are opportunities where we can make decisions today that impact our future. The earthquake, in the last example, um, is one way where it's an outside circumstance. But there are also opportunities through planning processes, through community engagement, where we can really make a difference. And this is an image of International Boulevard in Oakland. And I just wanted to show, these are um, images by Urban Advantage. 
that change can be incremental and that the small changes that we make can add up to something, um, to a vision. If we have something we want to see. So um, first this one change where new buildings go in and then lighting fixtures, which can have an impact in terms of safety and also they can sometimes have historic references. Uh, then trees, which are some of my favorite things, and obviously people, and over time as these shifts occur, um, you, can, you can impact the, the sense of place or um, make a, uh, you can revitalize an economic area. I also want to bring up the point that there are different ways we can use the space we already have. Space can be flexible. Uh, in Sonoma County, um, you may notice there are a lot of parking spots. We are very much connected to a car culture. And uh, the images up here are from an event called Parking Day, which was originally started by an arts organization in San Francisco called Rebar, when they realized that there was no legal requirement that parking spaces be used for cars. That as long as you pay the meter, at least in San Francisco, you can do whatever you want with that space. <laughs> They created an annual event, and um, each year now it's become national and international. It's, it's definitely hit a zeitgeist with people, um, where it's given an opportunity for people to reflect and say, hey, you know, this is public space. Maybe we want to use it differently. Maybe we want to have it more people-centered than car-centered. And so you can see in Seattle, there's a group who's hanging out. It's like they're going to do lawn bowling later. And in Philadelphia, there was a group that got together and took over a larger section of the street, and they were able to make a bigger type of park presence. I also bring this up slightly self-serving because Green Belt Alliance is working with several organizations to participate in parking day this year, which is September 16th. And so um, we'll be somewhere in downtown Santa Rosa, and I invite you to stop by and see our park. Um, also, this is part of a movement that is happening. People are becoming more aware of repurposing streets. And here are two local examples. On the, um, let's see, it's my right, um, is the, an image from Wednesday Night Market, which is a farmer's market that happens during the summer in downtown Santa Rosa, where they close many streets downtown. And it's a really wonderful time to get to know some local farmers, connect with um, the community and just have a lot of fun. And the actual the regional park system has been using this strategy as well. Um, they now have an event on Tuesday evenings called Park and Eat, where you can go into the park and you can um, eat some delicious food, some uh, food trucks. Um, so it, it are just creative and fun ways for us to think about the environment around us, and that can influence what we think about for the future of Sonoma. And as I mentioned, I work for Green Belt Alliance, and I'm lucky in that I get to spend my time at work thinking about policies and how the policies we enact today um, can influence the future. And I spend a lot of time engaging people in dialogue around what those policies could and should look like. And to that end, Green Belt Alliance has come up with a vision for the future. Uh, it's specifically for the Nine County Bay Area, but since I work in Sonoma County, I spend a lot of time thinking about what it means in terms of implementation locally here. And we want we see a future community that's livable and sustainable. And that includes a community where there are homes that are available to people in different situations across all incomes. There is a, a housing shortage in the Bay Area, and that's definitely something we'll have to think about moving into the future. And specifically in Sonoma County, you may have heard that there's a new train line coming in called the Sonoma Marin Area Rail Transit Line. And it's 70 miles of train that's going to link Marin all the way up to Cloverdale. And the regional government, um, MTC, Metropolitan Transportation Commission, has actually given grants to cities along the line to think about walkability, housing, and access to transit. And so this is certainly something I work on a lot in Sonoma County. And in my vision for, for the future, I see um, many more units um, of housing or transit. Healthy lifestyles, um, you may know that 
obesity and diabetes are issues that are uh, growing for the community. And in terms of thinking about the built environment in the future, I'd like to see more robust uh, bike trails. I'd like to see more schools participating in the Safe Rides to School program and other people in general work, uh, involved in some of the great programs the county has started like iWalk and iGrow where people have more opportunity to have access to recreation and different ways to get around. And in terms of access to transit, I mentioned SMART, but I also, you know, not everybody can drive. Some people don't want to drive, but you know, as we age or if you can't afford a car, there are different barriers that stop people from driving. And Sonoma County doesn't have the best bus system. Um, the buses don't always run late. <coughs> Many of your students who might rely on the bus, you might be very familiar with this. There's not always the best network. The bus always it doesn't always go where you want it, want it to. And so that's something in terms of thinking about the future of the county that I'd really like to see, especially as SMART comes in, that there are better linkages between the regional um, transit opportunities and the local ones. Uh, combating climate change. This is an issue that's happening that's um, always in the newspaper. Uh, you may have heard about some of the legislation like AB 32 that mandates that cities start thinking about climate change. And um, SB 375, which actually is a policy that looks at the regional cooperation between municipalities and other governments. And in Sonoma County, we're lucky that we have at the county level uh, Sonoma County RCP, the uh, um, Sonoma County Regional Climate um, Planning Association that's um, actually focusing on bringing different pieces together to start thinking through what a sustainable future looks like. How do we reduce our carbon emissions? And you know, in terms of what I would like to see, um, there's new policies coming at the state around green building. I'd like to see new buildings built at the highest level of efficiency and sustainability. I'd like to see the retro programs succeed in terms of um, doing energy audits and making existing buildings uh, better from a sustainability perspective and getting people out of their cars among many other different policies. There's also the adaptation side, thinking about how sea level rise and how the weather systems are going to shift and what that means for Sonoma County in terms of agriculture and, and other things. Uh, there are many different organizations working on this. Uh, working farms, uh, agriculture is a huge component of the local economy. It's not always that easy to do from a business perspective. <coughs> there is a new group called the Food System Alliance, which is a multi-stakeholder group that's working with the county to address this issue of how do you improve access to food, food security? How do you support the businesses to make sure that farming remains a viable option for people? So thinking about the future of Sonoma County, I would definitely hope that we're able to uh, support and maintain this part of what makes it great to live and work and visit here. And protecting vital lands. This is an issue that's near and dear to my heart. Um, Sonoma County, is a model in the sense that all nine cities in the county have urban growth boundaries, which you may or may not know what this wonky thing is. It's a policy that dictates where development can and can't go. And so by having an urban growth boundary around the cities, it means that the cities are consciously saying we want to develop where there's already infrastructure. We do not want to sprawl. We do not want to turn green space into building space. And by doing so, you know, you really create that sense of place as you drive from community to community or bike or however you get around, you enter into a community and you say, oh, this is really, I, I know where I am. This is uh, a unique place. Um, and I hope that over time as we think about the future that this remains a value that's at the core of how we make decisions and that we're able to really um, protect the open spaces as we move forward. And so in conclusion, this is my vision for the future of Sonoma County. As I mentioned, there are a lot of different organizations involved, and I love dialogue. I really appreciate that this event is happening, and that you know, just by sharing these ideas, I think it's a really rich space to think about 
um, what our future could look like. And if you want to learn more about what I'm doing, what the organization is doing, or get involved in just grab me during one of the breakout sessions. That's it. Thank you.